But I have a guest in the studio today. Her name is Macy Weatherhead. Did I pronounce that right? You did, yes. And she has a very interesting, I don't know if she considers it a career or her pastime or um, her, but let me just get right into it. So Macy, I met here at the library. This library here in Fort Wayne is so awesome. There's so much going on all the time. But Macy was here with Winston and Winston, she and Winston were engaged with the community um, while Winston kind of sashayed through the library <laughs> as the kids were reading to him. Winston happens to be a therapy dog. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. And he is so beautiful. I try to picture a way I can tell you what he looks like and I could not even come up with something other than he is the most beautiful most cuddly dog <laughs> ever yeah I would have to agree <laughs> <laughs> so Macy was is here with she's does pet therapy with paws Inc um, and they what they consider themselves doing is They are pets assisting the well-being and success. And Macy is his owner person. (laughs) I like that. Or his handler. Okay, Macy, um, I guess I'm kind of all over the place. Can you describe Winston first? Sure. So he (laughs) is a a two-and-a-half-year-old golden doodle, and he has a brownish color coat. Um, stands pretty tall, weighing about 90 so pounds. A lot of the comments that I've gotten compared uh, him to Bear in the Big Blue House, that the old cartoon, or Alf, um, or Clifford the Big Red Dog. So those are some of the comparisons that we've gotten. Um, But yeah, like I said, he's a golden doodle. That's a golden retriever and poodle mix. They do come in all shapes and sizes, so they're all small. There are smaller sizes of of Winston, I guess you would say, mm-hmm. um, and yeah, that I mean that's about as best as I yeah. can describe. A lot of people say he has an old man's face. He does. He looks like a man dog. <laughs> um, but yeah, how did you choose um, Winston? Um, I first heard of the Golden Doodle breed from my brother. He has one as well. I really loved their temperament with. Um, children as well as older people they're great family dogs and I knew that's something I wanted and I knew I wanted a bigger dog so the golden doodle breed just seemed like a perfect fit and I ended up reaching out to a friend who I knew got a golden doodle in the area and she referred me to her breeder so I went through her and got matched up with Winston he was the only male in his litter it oh. was like destiny we were supposed to be together so um, so did he choose you or you chose him I no, he chose me for <laughs> sure. He was the we were the only two matched up with wow. each other. So yeah, it was kind of meant to be with us. Mm-hmm. So he is beautiful, and I um, <clears throat> this is one of the things I had to share is that um, doing here at the library they do pet therapy, and that is having um, you can you you go ahead and talk absolutely. About that. Uh-huh. So through pause we. Uh, come to the library and we do a program called Pause to Read. So we come in, Winston and I come in, and kids can sign up to read to Winston, and I'm there as well. And um, it just provides a very safe and, and comforting environment for the kids. Mm-hmm. Um, very no pressure, just letting them become more comfortable with reading and their confidence with reading, and it just provides a great environment for them to also become comfortable with animals if they're not as familiar with animals, just being able to kind of be in a safe environment um, and being able to have, you know, those factors controlled, I guess. Right, right. And (laughs) when I observed Winston with um, the kids, he just kind of lays there like, okay, (laughs) Uh, so calm. His mm-hmm. dis- his disposition is so calm. It just blows me away. And so his face is huge. <laughs> Let me see. How do I describe this? I guess Clifford the Big Red Dog. And mm-hmm. I just have to say this. There was a little kid who, um, and Winston is so docile and, 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 and just laid back 
that um, I heard you saying, hey, you want to you want to pet him? And the little boy shook his head no because Winston looked at him with his mouth hanging open. <laughs> like, but he didn't want to. He didn't want to talk to him face to face. But he turned around and and he went to the back of Winston and was playing with his tail. Yeah. And Winston just kind of stood there like, okay, <laughs> I'm okay with that. <laughs> I thought that was the cutest thing ever. It's pretty interesting because Winston does stand eye height with some of these kids that's super intimidating (laughs) having an animal just straight to your face so it's pretty fun to see them how the kids react and if they're super comfortable with them they go up right up and hug him or if they're a little weary and and taken aback i loved watching that i wanted to take pictures but i said no that probably wouldn't (laughs) couldn't do that but it was so Mm -hmm. it was such a precious moment yeah how did you get um, involved with paws Yeah, so I first heard of PAWS when I was taking classes at the University of St. Francis. They would bring in therapy dog teams during the finals week, Mm -hmm. as that's a very stressful week for students Uh. and staff. So they would bring in the dogs and let us kind of de-stress a little bit before taking finals. Um, And coming, I live in Ohio currently, so coming from Ohio, I would make sure I gave myself plenty of time to come and sit with the dogs (laughs) for about 10 to 15 minutes before each exam. Did you have um, Winston at that time? I did, but he was just a few months old. He okay. Was, he was a puppy. Um, and so that's that was my initial encounter with PAWS. And then I was doing basic obedience classes uh, through PetSmart just to teach Winston, you know, manners. And the instructor had mentioned, you know, Winston has a great personality for a therapy dog. I think he would be a great option if, if that's what you're interested in. And so those were two big seeds that were planted. And then right when Winston turned one years old, that's about when you can start getting into the therapy dog work. We went straight through the certification process and, and getting involved with PAWS. Is it very a very strenuous process? I, I It is very involved. They want to make sure that they provide, their teams are very safe and, and they make sure they train us very well in order to know what kind of encounters we may uh, come across. Uh, the training we went through, we had to pass a canine good citizen test. And okay. it, it's very much just what it sounds like. It's just making sure your dog behaves well out in public. And then from there, we went through Alliance of Therapy Dogs. So that's the organization we're certified through. Okay. And we passed another test similar to the canine good ther- or good citizen test. However, it had a few other situations that uh, could cause stress for the dog. So loud noises uh. or putting them in certain situations that may make him a little uncomfortable and seeing how we handled ourselves in those situations. From there, you are observed three times by their staff or their trainers, twice in a nursing home type of facility, and then the third time with children, making sure your dog behaves well in both sets of age groups. And then from there, you're kind of, you know, released to the wild. Uh, We were refer to PAWS, since that was the Fort Wayne kind of chapter, they provide mm-hmm. Alliance of Therapy Dog teams um, to, to the area. Now, when you say team, does that, that, does that mean you all come out together? In some situations, yes or no. Uh, Winston and I usually go on our own, okay. um, but they're like at the school, so at the University of St. Francis, they will bring in three, four, five teams there because there are a lot of people in that situation. Okay. Um, so depending on where you're at, you know, some I've been um, at one site where we did a community type of well or a wellness program for a hospital and they in that situation we had I think three teams there. Oh. So it just kind of depends on that. Uh, that factor. That's nice. Does Winston shed? I just thought of that. I, I, I compare it to like human shedding. Like, you know, you find hairs here and there, or if you brush your hair, it comes out like that. That's how I compare it to. He doesn't, not to the point where I have to clean regularly. Or Those pick beautiful up hair. curls. I know. He I does know. Not, wow. <laughs> no, he doesn't. I know it, it, it varies depending on if they get a lot of the golden retriever in ah. them or versus the poodle. 
How long have you and Winston been involved with PAWS? We are approaching our first year, completing our first year as being involved, and we have had a blast. Oh, my gosh. We've met so many great people, and and it's fun to see how the people you're interacting with, how their moods or their days change just by petting a dog. It's it's crazy. So we have been blessed with such a wonderful initiation to this program. It's like I saw you twice and I'm like, this is for kids. <laughs> like, I would have just said, and then I have to back up and say, can I talk to you for a moment? <laughs> as, I'm, as I'm touching Winston. Yeah, I'll bet it does. It, it's it's therapy for the parents as well absolutely, as the kids. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's one of my favorite parts. I love interacting with the kids because I never know what they're going to say. That's probably one of my favorite parts. Um, but it's, it's really fun to watch some of the adults act like kids and it just takes them back to their childhood <laughs> I know, right, and they right. just they're on like I I had this one little old lady she was 70s ish and she went straight to the ground was on the ground playing with Winston oh. <laughs> and so it's just really fun to see how much of an impact these dogs can have on these people's lives now with paws are there certain breeds that they take I, their main concern is providing sa- like safety is their number one concern. So I don't believe that they have any restrictions on breeds. Mm-hmm. Um, it's more so being able to go through the testing and being able to have that calm um, and controlled type of uh, disposition, I, I guess. Um, and like I said, safety is their number one. So they're very strict on that through the training and making sure that um, they provide the best experience for not only us, but for the patients or uh, clients or people right. that we're seeing. How do how does one um, secure you and and Winston to come to an activity? How does that happen? Sure. So you uh, so anyone that would want to reach out um, and have a therapy dog team at their workplace, at their school, or anywhere, you can contact uh, Miss Kay Anderson. She is the director of placement services. Um, her email is r e m x k a a n at aol dot com. She does all of the placement for the therapy dog teams, um, and she would be a great contact to reach. What out are the to. areas that? Uh, who can co- contact you guys? Really anyone. Anyone mm-hmm. that thinks they that a therapy dog team would be beneficial towards them. Um, we're, we're seen all over in the community. We're in airports, at events, carnivals, different, different activities. We're all over the place. Um, and like I said, I'm from Ohio, so I've been doing visits over in Ohio as well. Um, so they're, they're pretty flexible with placing teams wherever you need them. And tell me, when you to to be a um, a part of the team, do you need a therapist license to participate? No, um, not at all. We're I mean I don't have any credentials in regards to therapy type work. Mm-hmm. Um, I currently work as a medical scribe, so I'm in a hospital, but I don't have any specific licensing or certifications. We just went through the Alliance of Therapy Dog certification process, and that's really all you need. Very nice. Mm-hmm. What's the difference? This is a very good point that you brought up. Mm-hmm. What is? Wait a second. Let me make sure I get this right. Can you t- speak to the difference of a therapy dog and oh, what is it? The um, a, a service dog. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Talk to that's that. a that yeah that's a huge difference and one um, or a, a big difference between those two and one I was very unfamiliar with prior to getting involved with PAWS. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the main difference is a service dog is trained to perform a certain task for individuals with disabilities. Mm-hmm. So I think one of the most common ones we think of is a service dog for someone who is blind, mm-hmm. a seeing eye dog. Um, but they're utilized in many different ways, whether a person has diabetes, um, post-traumatic stress disorder, any mobility issues, autism or ep- epilepsy. Um, they're utilized in all different ways. They typically live with the person, and um, when you see them out and about, you're um, not allowed to pet them as they're working. Um, but they are they are amazing animals. Oh, they my are. goodness gracious. I've heard crazy stories of these service animals saving their, their handlers or the the 
the person they're living with. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so that's the major difference. Therapy dogs are the complete opposite. They they welcome being loved on and and they all the cuddles. They want to be touched. Exactly, okay. exactly. So they're completely opposite. And it's best if you are unsure as a person approaching a dog. It's best just to ask the the owner or the handler if you're allowed to pet their dog. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at some of these programs that you guys. <clears throat> participate in. Do you want to speak to that, the program? Oh, sure. That you guys participate sure. in? Yeah, so um, like I said, we're involved in many different sites. I think uh, one of the biggest areas that we go to would be nursing homes and hospital settings and providing that emotional and, and psychological support for patients in a hospital. We just went to a hospital in Ohio in my in my hometown and just being able to be a new face and a, and a bright positive presence is amazing for these patients who are in the same room staring at the same thing day after day. Yeah. Um, so that's a, that's a huge one, being able to provide that emotional support but we've also done educational type of programming like the pause to read um, providing kids an opportunity to read to Winston um, and this has been shown just to you know be able to provide that <clears throat> comforting um, experience and environment for for students um, we also went to the first day of school at Hicksville oh. elementary elementary school so that was very exciting um, because a lot of kids are really nervous absolutely and he just like kind of like they, they Zens them out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Zens them out. Yeah. Yeah, especially if you're a new student at that school. I mean, the first day is nerve-wracking to begin with, but if you're coming to a new place, oh, my goodness. So we were able to offer, you know, friendship and social support and just overall reduce that overwhelming feeling yes. of the first day. Yes, Um. We've also been seen at um, disaster relief, some of the major disaster relief, so or um, some of the shootings that have been happening. They'll send uh, therapy dog teams to those locations if there aren't any. Yeah, I'm not sure how involved Alliance of Therapy Dog or pauses with that, but I know that they have other organizations have sent therapy dog teams to those sites what too. What a good idea. Yeah, to be with the victims and the victim's family, if only to take their mind off reality for just a few moments. It's just very nice to have that comforting feeling in such a um, tragic or traumatic event that's going yes. on in these people's lives. That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. And then we've also been, like I said, at airports, as flying can be very nerve-wracking for people. The therapy dogs can help reduce that stress, reduce your blood pressure, and kind of, like I said, zen you out and just mm -hmm. provide that comforting over that comforting feeling before you, um, you know, approach or go through with a very nerve-wracking event. And the, we are also seen, you know, in funeral homes and special needs centers. Mm. Um, and, and community events all over. Some of those um, areas I would never even think of, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. especially a funeral. How relaxing would I that know. be? I know. Yeah, yeah. That's um, Especially I, if the person who deceased loved pets. Absolutely, absolutely. Wow. Yeah, I, I know they're utilized a lot with children in the funeral home setting because of how confusing and how overwhelming that yeah. feeling is. Just being able to sit and pet a dog is can be very relaxing and very therapeutic in, in that nature. That's cool. Mm -hmm. That's cool. If you could think of something, um, an experience, you don't have to mention names if, if you don't want, but an experience that will be with you forever. Wow. There are so many. Oh, my goodness. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> um. One, I, the, uh, there's a lot of funny moments, especially working with children. They ask hilarious questions. Um, but one moment in particular, I just visited um, a little old lady in the hospital, and she actually used to groom pets and um, 
Uh, sp- specifically poodles, so very close to the the golden doodle breed, and uh, her demands w- to the staff were she she was not going to physical therapy until she saw the dog. <laughs> <laughs> so she refused to go to physical therapy. So we were directed to her room immediately, and you could just see how excited she was. Oh my goodness, you could just see how took much her down memory lane. Oh, absolutely, mm-hmm, and. Mm-hmm. You know, just having them be able, like, I think it's almost nice just to have another person there, too, because they just wanted to tell all the stories about all their old dogs and oh. all the memories they had with their pets. And it's just very rewarding to to even just make their day for five minutes and provide them that outlet just to talk about happy memories. And now, when you go, how long do you mm-hmm. usually stay or that varies? It varies, yeah. So uh, some patients, I can be in there for, you know, 15, 20 minutes. Other patients just want a couple pets and then they're good. Um, usually at each site, it, it, it's, it ranges from a half hour to a couple hours. We don't usually go too much longer. I think Winston just kind of gets tired and a little overwhelmed after that much time. Okay. Mm-hmm. You're making me want to get a pet just to do that. <laughs> I know it's that it's very that rewarding. It is. I know. I used to do um, jazzing with Jenna. Mm-hmm. Um, just going into the nursing homes and playing um, jazz music. Wow. And then it kind of reverted back to music of of their era. Mm-hmm. And that was just so rewarding just to watch their faces. And I would see some residents that would be sleeping and then you'd play certain music and they would just wake up. Mm -hmm. So I can imagine um, being able to put their hands on on, on Winston's soft fur. Right. How that turns it around. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you always hear those stories of patients not talking or not, being very responsive, but then they bring in a therapy animal or Mm -hmm. they bring in music therapy Mm -hmm. and they're, you know, they're opening their eyes or they're communicating or they're, you know, they're making motions, um, just seeing improvement or seeing different changes in their status just with the therapy that is, you know, external from medical therapy. It's very, it's very cool. It is. What has been one of the most challenging moments that you've had? I think uh, near the beginning of the training, just because we were so new, I really had no idea what the therapy dog world entailed or what even I was doing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So learning the different tips and tricks and how to navigate your dog in certain settings and how to control him and and even just working with Winston as a professional team rather than just, you know, he's my buddy. Mm -hmm. So uh, maintaining that relationship and and how I worked with him and how we worked together was probably the most challenging throughout this whole thing. But I think we got it down to a, a science <laughs> that we're we're pretty good team together, you know, being a year into it, we've gotten the hang of what we're doing. Yeah, I mm-hmm. thought you you were very seasoned. Oh, thank you. Like, I'm very observant. Like, I don't know, he's kind of big before I go <laughs> over there. So, nice, very nice. Thank you. For anyone who would be interested in um, perhaps... Being a handler mm-hmm. of, of a therapy. Hey, well, you know what? Let me back up. Are only dogs used for therapy? Right. So with the organization I'm in, yes. there, there it is only dogs. It's Alliance of Therapy Dogs. And that that's the one I'm most familiar with. However, there are different organizations that can certify any type of animal. Really? Yeah. I'm not as familiar with the certification process or if there is any testing or um, what is involved with that. But I know there are, you can use different animals for therapy. I know a big one is horse therapy. Oh, okay. Yeah, yes, that's yes. a huge one. A lot of people utilize that, um, especially with special needs. I've, I've heard great things with uh, utilizing the horse therapy for that. And I was just doing some research before, and there's a there's a bunch of different facilities just in our area alone, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah. does this does horse therapy? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, that's, I didn't know that. I, yeah, mm-hmm. I didn't either. Um, so yeah, there are different animals that can be certified. Like I said, I don't know the the process of that or mm-hmm. how intense it is. If it's as in, as involved like 
Alliance of Therapy Dogs um, because I'm just not as familiar with that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What would you suggest to someone who perhaps is interested in um, being a handler? Right. I would suggest um, if you haven't already going to just a basic obedience class Mm -hmm. and just seeing how well your dog Uh, reacts in those types of situations. That's a big telltale sign. Um, And working with the instructor of that class, they've they've seen tons of dogs and knowing what works well in the therapy world and what doesn't. From there, I actually took, um, I guess you could call it personal training for, for us to work on some of the skills that you need as a therapy dog team. Um, And we went to, oh my goodness, I'm going to butcher this, green Green Dog Goods, I believe is what it's called. Um, That's over near the Coliseum. And they, oh my goodness, they were fantastic. Now what is that? A training facility? Yeah, it's a, yep, mm mm-hmm. And they um, they have a little shop, and they do all sorts of stuff over there. That's where we took our initial canine good citizen test. And like I said, they were fantastic. Uh, so I worked with them, and they were amazing at referring me to Paws, who got me through yeah. Alliance of Therapy Dogs. And that was just a great little route. Um, but if you are interested, you can always contact Paws. Um, they have a Facebook page, and they have a, a, a website as well. If you just Google it, it'll pop right up. Okay. Um, but but they are wonderful at answering any questions you have. And um, and if you do have any questions, you're more than welcome to reach out to me as well. I I love talking about it and love you getting more You want to provide your number? Uh, sure. My, um, my cell phone number is 260-579-3189. And my email is Macy Weatherhead, just like it sounds, at gmail.com. Nice. And you know what? As I... As I um, you were talking. Uh oh. Well, the question popped up and, it, and and it's gone now. So I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I wasn't supposed to ask that question. <laughs> the universe took it yeah, away. Yeah, took it away. <laughs> <laughs> I thank you so much. What would you leave as a final thought then? Unless there's something else that you you like to share. No, I think we covered a lot of I it. I think we did. Um, I just want to thank you, Ms. Jennifer, for inviting Aww. me to talk on this platform. It's just really nice to talk about something that a lot of people are doing for the community and, and doing good. It's just an, another neat way for people to get involved and volunteer in their communities with their pets if you're as passionate as I am right. about your dog. So right. they're I just, just remembered. Oh, okay. I just remembered. So there are, because there are certain dogs, certain breeds um, that – are not social dogs, are not social breeds. Right. Like, um, even certain poodles are, you know, don't touch me. Right, So right. I guess a be- a good way to, to figure that out is to go through the training. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that's where I started, and it was a great start. We just did a basic obedience, you know, sit, stay, come, the basic commands, and that was a great indicator of Winston's personality, how okay. well he got along with other people, other dogs. Um, yes, because he has to get along with other pets as well. Right, right. That is one of the tests in, or one of the areas of our test. You um, have an interaction with a dog, and you have you. He's can acknowledge that there's a dog there, but he's not supposed to be too interested. He's supposed to be very calm about it, and that was a very tough one for us. <laughs> Because Winston likes to play. <laughs> <laughs> but he's not aggressive, though. No, no. He's super friendly. Super <laughs> friendly. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, this was yes. amazing. Yeah, I love this. So um, I guess let's give you a final thought. Um, I don't want to end it, but I think we, we talked about <laughs> everything. <laughs> we did. Um, I guess all I would have to say is that we're very thankful to the pause for allowing us to go out in the community and and do all the things that we've done. And if anyone is ever interested in having a therapy dogs team come and provide that service, reach out. I mean, we are all over and we are more than willing to come and visit your workplace, you know, anywhere you would like us. So we are here and we are ready to serve and provide joy and smiles and all the cuddles that you may need. Very nice. Nice.